envoy from survivors, victims from the mass of South Sudan conflicts, called to end the conflict-related violence or the victims of violence accountable. This report is conducted. <laughs> and two others were the first to be arrested in the Chimen container released, it, released day after 56 people brought it and John were the last person to be released from the container and replaced with 50. <laughs> consequences restricts from the barracks on 20th December 2013. The day that Polo the Kang announced allegiance to Mashar and declared an interior government of the state while the state government, a state governor, when we did apply to Mayom County, the lawyer soldier restricts to the outlets of Bimnam County and were imposed by the West Western Baragazals expedition and the Northern Baragazals Celebration movements and militants caused lead by the police and commander Mario Young decided to support them. By 27 December, the confined force of South Sudan Liberation Army and South Sudan Liberation Army decided to incite the Mayan County 20 kilo from Batu. On 29 December, we did out the rebel from the Mayoma and on the by the town of 7. January. Around 8 January 2014, the SPLA force advanced to Bantil, which had been mostly evacuated. The security, the secure side on the 10 January and the southern part of United States experienced the repeats, violent clashes and confrontation daylong and random attacks and armed local population. After the captures of Blair Mayandi County, the 30th January 2024, Lair missionaries compound were used by the government force as their base. The container in Lair missionaries compound were used for the for the storage of salmon, which at that time they were construction and San and San Joseph main church. The survivors of Lair containers, one person was interviewed by human rights organization and human rights defender investigators of South Sudan. But the but the two survivors were not. I'm by name Jack Dengar Kek. I'm a human rights defender, working with the New Faith Media as a communication officer and freelance journalist. I'm doing research in Juba POC. This research focuses on the atrocity happens during the conflict of 2013. So I'm very happy, Matthew, to be with you today to get more information about what you passed through and what is the nature of the container that you are in. You are welcome. Thank you very much for doing the research. My name Melio, you will be OC. Well, when the war broke out, I was in many big country of the United States. They joined government force and other military groups involved in the attack. We are extremely violent. We are mixed military and civilian colossus. We are the armed. We, we are with the arms and the weapons, so as AK-47, PK, PKM machine, guns, fuel rocket, propeller grenade, RPG, other banner uh, weapons, so as the spear machines and knife. 
they attack, they attack the village. They start storming the village and settlement area in the in the broad daylight. And randomly attacking and harming local population, included women, children, all the people. And in our village, they start taking civilian property, burning down the houses, raving the teenager girls, kidnapping some women. For example, my sister was kidnapped up to now. We don't know where he is. And other, we are killed in the process of escaping the fire to the buoy. We know uh, when this conflict happened, there is a lot of issues which occur. When the conflicts uh, reach our area, it intends for me personally it was a lot from the hand of the government of Mayandid in Rukwai and in their country. I was arrested and my sister was taken up to now. We don't know where about. When I was arrested, all my property was taken by the government soldier. Uh, who are the people who come and raid your cattle and kidnap your daughter? Those who came, uh, we know that they are from SPLA and accompanied by the civilian in uniform. We come from Mayom and Koi County. The youth from Mayendi and later also involved in the process of killing and raping. When the fighting reached Rukwai, reached Mayandid, I was in Rukwai, Payom, around, around month of January, where they start taking everything from my community. Those who came to our area are the SPLA soldiers and civilian youth with the heavy weapon. Which I believe they come from Mayom County, northern part of Unity State. Second attack was carried out by the arms youth from Coach, country of Central Unity. And in later country, it was carried out by the son of the area. Uh, thank you, Beru Maigar Bain. When you reach Rukwai and Mayandit, what are the issues that you have seen with your naked eye? And did you recognize anybody? Yeah, we have known that the fighting was coordinated by two commissioners from Lair County and Mayanid County, Kor Garmai Garang and Let Wal Yai Garquat. From the beginning of the conflict in the middle, they changed the commissioner of uh, Mayanid County with the weak Kasha. And weak Kasha also did the same. And again, Secretary Chapel Garkong Tuong was appointed as a commissioner and did a lot of atrocity from appointed three commissioners apply the same agenda. Those who fail to come to the county headquarters are subjected as a rebel. My sister was taken when I uh, taken to a new location before my arrest. Thank you very much, Garvain, for sharing all this pain story. Uh, now we we need to at least focus on uh, what happened to you and how your sister was kidnapped. My sister was was kidnapped before I was arrested. After you was taken, and I was arrested, we got information in 2016. You went to Khartoum, Sudan, but no news about her. We sent someone to the family. Her name is Kol Nyalwak. Her name is Kol Nyalwak. He is 14 years old. Uh, now we have like two cases. Your sister was kidnapped and you were arrested. Do we have another case? Yeah, during the raid of Mayadid County by the bull of Mayom County, they took around 40 cows from me. And after they leave, I managed to buy some cow. And the second attack, 
COP 2015 jagay jagay use of Koi County. Jagay use of Koi County took them one again. I remain with nothing. The government was and the late Kurgar Mai went to my ended county headquarter and we heard some news. They 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 went back and we come out from the hiding forest bush. When we hear people come from the hiding bush, they start looking the use who can join them in their government. Those who refuse to join them, the government will arrest them. So they come to our home they pour us sitting outside around morning hours. They come with the two SPLA pickup car with the heavy loaded with the with the weapon. They took us to lay and put us in a something like content like 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 a storage shipment container, not the prisoner. There is no oxygen inside the container. After ten to twenty minutes, after. 20 to 30 minutes they open the container for us to get the fresh air as oxygen and they close it. We stay like that until the night hours. And at the night they start picking one by one for the session of interrogation and torture. The first day we are about three. Sorry Garvine uh, for what you went through. The first day when we are arrested Uh, the first day we were arrested, three people from the same village, they start with one foot guy for interrogation and they beat them very badly. And the second they come for the Peter and tortured Peter. They torture him. They cut his ear with a knife. Three of us who stay in the container three days. Second day, they took one foot out from container and his family members pay some cow to them to be released. My family pay some cow for me to be released. The family day, the final day of my release, they captured 56 unknown civilians from the cattle camp and the village. They put them in the same container. I stayed there for three days. Because the human container is too small for 56 people to stay there to survive. After they released me, I went back to our village around morning hours. We heard the news of 56 people died in the human container. Where I stayed there for three days. And there is a no hole in, inside the container to see the reflection of light or breeze. It is too dark. You didn't see anything when I was close. Those people, they were sad. There is no interrogation or investigation took place when they arrived in the container. When they captured them, they just collect them from the village, cattle camp, those who didn't run to the bush for their safety. They don't ask anybody. They just put you inside the container. They don't ask anybody. Uh, how can you describe the container, how it look like? El it is the same container design for the prison or it is the shimin container that have no hole. And if you can if you can remember the location, the container does not have any hole. If it is close, it is dark, you don't see anything. Either day or night, when it is open, they will find us laying down ground with the honest of the shipman container and epidemic bracing. That is why they open it after 20 minutes to 30 minutes because they know that it is very hot. It is a container exactly for shipman of for shipman of seamen. Yeah, uh, the container located uh, in Lair, 
headquarter and the, the wheel container was used, it is a missionary's compound where they use the container for a storage of semen when they are constructing the little main church and the school. Would any, com any commissioner that you can recognize from there? Yes. The commissioner that I saw that day, the commissioner and the general I saw that day was the late Kurgar Garmai in charge of overall commander operation. And General Mayil Kulang was in charge of operation execution with the put soldier. And many generals from my home country, which I don't know, but I can remember their face. Uh, based on your experience. And the reason they took you to the container, does it mean that they don't have any prison or jail to put you there or it is there, but it is a part of interrogation? Uh, the reason why they put us there it is because it is a part of interrogation. They mean it. Those who survive will survive, and those who die will die. Uh, the 56, 55 people who die in the container, do you have any information where they took their body? Yeah? Uh, um, around morning hours, the 52 people who die in the shipment container, we heard that they removed their body from the container and took them to another area called Nguong, where they put them in the open place and leave them without giving their body to the family members. And the members in, in that area, they start monitoring anybody who will come at night to collect the body of the disease. Uh, how many... When the family of the disease heard that the body we are taken to Juong, so people is sneak at night time with the touch and lie, come and look for the body of the beloved one. If I can ask you, uh, John, uh, those who came, are they really new or they are mixed? They are, they are, they are mixed. They are mixed. Anybody who will come at night to collect the body? I, uh, I saw Nuer son of the area and some tribe from the different location in which I can't tell. After that incident in the village, our life was in danger because at the time we ran to the bush for the safety with their daily activity. When they released me, I went back to where they got me. In the village, so we, we, we keep hiding. When they come back, we go to the bush. When they go back, we come out for our daily activity. After that incident in the village, our life was in danger because at the time we ran to the bush for the safety some time with the daily activity burning down, remaining hours, raving girl, and some were, some were killed in the process after they return back to the base, we come out. Sometimes those who persuaded they run to the enemies in Bantu. Uh, like for me, uh, the attack of 2016 every year, I was shot on the stomach and my sister age of 12 to 13 was kidnapped. So they took me to Unimis in, in there. After that, they transferred, to, they transferred me to Bantu for the part of medication. Uh, that is how I reach uh, 
POC. They took me to Unimis TPA, temporal protected area in there for treatment, but the health situation was in their need. I was transferred to Juba for further treatment after the doctor approved my health status for this home, I come to Jube, POC. We stay here for some day and went to Robert camp in Kakuma, Kenya. Seeing I was arrested and shot two times, no human rights organization or journalists who interviewed me about what I went through during this conflict. Uh, sorry, John, for what you really across during this. Uh, conflicts. This the bus shot. They shot me at the back. That is the second at my stomach. That is April 2016. So that one was really terrible shots. That they took me to Lair and transferred me to Juba for further medication due to this shot in my stomach. Uh, John, thank you very much for listening all the history that you went through. Please, now we are in the peace time. How do you really cope up with the situation? And how do you hear the peace implementation in South Sudan? Uh, so that information, we heard that there is a peace. But up to now, we are not seeing anything. Because the, the perpetrators of the different crime are still living with us. And those who committing crime are now leading the country. Uh, John, there are any organization who came and interview you? No. Thank you, John, for this time. John, uh, please, do you have any message to anybody who will watch us online or listen to us in any podcast? My message to the implementers of peace, there is nothing big I can say. There is a need to put your differences aside and build our nation. There are a lot of people who are victimized by this conflict and those who lost their beloved one during the war. And the thing we went through are enough. We are urging our citizen or our government not to repeat one again. And my second message to the victim, survivors, family members, if this peace is implemented in letter and spirit, we can have a hope because chapter 5 of peace agreement I lie our Raja the victim of South Sudan conflict. I'm asking those who are afraid to tell their history or those who are afraid to explain what they went through during these nine years. What happened to him or her or the family member, we need to speak out so that we forget with others. Uh, John, it is not easy uh, for somebody like you to pass through all those information. But thank God. To the victim, survivors, family members, those who are listening to me or those who are watching this interview, don't afraid to tell your story. There is, there is nothing will happen again more than what we went through. If you tell him or her what you came on across during this time, so you will not repeat anything again. There is nothing that we can see more than what we went through. There is nothing that we can hide. It is our time to tell our story. There is nothing that I can afraid or we can afraid to tell. Thank you, John, for taking your time with me. Uh, I do really appreciate it.